it's, it's difficult to put into words, uh, profound, long lasting. Uh, I, I think for, for some, again, I don't want to generalize because the, the population who have autism is a very disparate, diverse uh, group of people with, with very different needs. But generally speaking, the, the sudden nature, the shock of the closure um, will, will have a profound effect in terms of their future development of trust in anybody, the sense of stability. It, it, for, for some youngsters in particular, those with attachment difficulties, this is, it, it is like another bereavement for them. And they've, the school has already had to cope with several, three bereavements in the last sort of two years. And this is, is the, the biggest bereavement of all. It's the loss of a community, the loss of family, the loss of a place where they felt safe. It, it, it's very hard to, it's very hard to engage with a parent on the phone when they can't speak because they're, they're crying so much. <clears throat> yeah, it's hard. So f I think for it will take a long time for them to recover. What would you say to any students watching this? Um, many of them will be going through an incredibly difficult time right now. Is there anything you can say, anything at all? Uh, there's, there's an old phrase that what doesn't kill us makes us stronger. And um, I think for all of us, for, for those of us involved in the school, uh, we have lost something. We we have this personal bereavement ourselves, uh, but we deal with a lot that's hard in life. Well, I, I do go back to a meeting, if you remember, that staff had with governors, where one member of staff spoke about the final week of term and said it was the most difficult week of her life, that it was worse than a family bereavement. So I th don't think we should underestimate the impact that it has on young people, but at the same time, life is full of these bad things and you, uh, you have to adjust, find ways of recovering. You've got to adopt that, that, that sort of positive outlook that good will come of bad. Uh, and and that's, that's what I would say to them. But I, I wouldn't say it in a very convincing way because there is this overwhelming sense that evil has triumphed over good over the last few months. And um, if, if good does come of it, I hope that it is in the, the culture of the organizations that have caused the downfall of the school. I hope it's in the individuals concerned in the way they reflect on themselves and the impact of their actions on others. Uh, and I hope it isn't on young people, and, and I hope what doesn't stay with them is a sense that adults can't be trusted, that professionals can't be trusted, and that life itself can't be trusted. It, it, it's such a complex scenario that I don't think there's, there's one question, but the one theme is get the facts on the table, get the truth out and examine it. And if we within the school had failed in any way, we will put our hands up and, and accept that and admit it. But if we do that, then we want others to do that. If there have been mistakes, then learn from those mistakes. It's the way any professional organization should behave. Uh, uh, and it might mean that there, is, there are cultural changes, procedural changes to the benefit of others. But what, what's absolutely clear is that no other school or community such as ours should ever have to go through this again, ever.